one. What is up, everybody? Hope I didn't wake you up. Hope you weren't taking a nap. Hope you weren't napping too much. It's totally fine to nap in the afternoon, by the way. But anyways, this is Killer K-Rail, and I am reporting live from Park City, Utah. And guess what? I am super stoked to talk smack with my good friend, none other than Roger Palmer, all the way from hot Houston, Texas. This is my brother from Park City. I met him over the winter. We quickly became acquainted. He is an up-and-coming trainer. He's a he's awesome. He's ripped to shreds, first of all. Not that that matters with everything, but I have to <laughs> give credit where it's due. And this guy has a really good attitude. He knows all about food. He knows all about fasting. He knows how to build abs, just like I do. He's basically a 10 or 15 year younger version of myself, to be honest. With you. And um, we quickly resonated and became friends. He moved to Houston about a month and a month and a half ago. I would yeah, say. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Mm -hmm. He decided to go from beautiful, lack of humidity, mountain air of Park City to nice, hot, and humid Houston for some reason. I don't know what. I think, he's, I think he has a girl involved here, but I'm not going to go down that road. Hey, it's just, it's just the Jamaican inside of me. I needed that humidity, man. I did like 10 years in Park City, Utah, and I was like, listen, I need somewhere to walk <laughs> right now. <laughs> You're like, it's time yeah, to get out of here. I've had enough of this cold weather. My warm bones need warm air. Anyway, Roger, thanks for joining me today. I love talking smack with cool people that are good friends of mine who are also in the health and fitness industry and sector. And um, our backgrounds kind of parallel each other quite a bit. We're both into like more of a plant-based diet. We're into uh, fasting and we're definitely into abs. And, you know, there's nothing wrong, in my opinion, with wanting to look aesthetically pleasing. And for me, it's not about the people. It's not about impressing people. It's about impressing me. I'm a huge fan of Bruce Lee, for example. I've always been ever since I was a little kid. And I watched B. Water last week. And I watched as he was up and coming. And I know his backstory and the whole nine yards. And his kind of story in his life really motivated me at a very young age. And he was all about peace and harmony and, and connection to Mother Nature and going against the grain and doing all these things and fighting the odds and everything else. He achieved, achieved amazing, wonderful things. And I always encourage people to do the exact same thing. Don't worry about what other people think or say. Never compare yourself to anyone. So I don't want any of you to get the wrong context about what we're going to talk about today with the ab thing. In order to get a six-pack, you know, I've got my six-pack challenge, my, my home workout program. And I devised that with, I put the word challenge at the end. And the challenge of getting a six-pack involves more than doing a thousand crunches. In fact, I don't even really do crunches. I don't like them. They're, they're overrated and they cause too much torque on the cervical spine. But in the big picture, the challenge of getting a six-pack involves always being tight with your diet. It involves turning things down that you don't necessarily want to do. You, want, you have to turn friends down sometimes. You have to look down at peer pressure. There's a lot of variables involved with getting a six-pack, and it's an all-encompassing thing. And when you go for that pursuit, that's like, in my opinion, Roger, I guess I think you probably agree with me that a defined six-pack is the defining moment of a, of a well-built body, and that shows that the person carrying that six-pack is very serious. Would you not agree? Yeah, I mean, think about it, right? Your second brain is in your six pack, right? So you're talking about all your emotions, all your feelings. So why not, instead of having like an underbody or a CRV, and nothing's wrong with these cars, don't get me wrong, but I just like to look like a Lamborghini every time I step out, right? And so we're just comparing it with car because a lot of people like car and a lot of people can understand that analogy. But for me, I feel like a strong core equals a strong mindset. And you need that mindset. I know that's what's going to help you to keep in the present moment. So when I talk about six pack, I'm always like, listen, this connects to my mind. So if I feel good down here, I'm going to feel good up here. And then I'm just going to be able to manifest more six pack and keep it. But I think one of the major things that really draw me to you, Kevin, was that, you know, with you, it was more like, dude, you're like that old and you're still crushing it. You still have the six pack and everything. So tell me, how did you maintain that? <laughs> that's funny I say you're that old you're that old <laughs> it's funny because sometimes I have to show people my license because they don't believe me how old I am but I'm not I'm not afraid of my age I'm 47 I turned 47 in February and um it's always basically been the same thing it's like I made a vow back in my early 20s how old are you now Roger? so I'm 28 28 I was probably about 20 I want to say 21 22 23 somewhere around there and I was like I want to do whatever I can to stay as ripped as I can as long as I can. And I know aging happens and all that stuff. And I'm like, but I don't buy it. I don't believe it. I'm like, there are things you can do to reverse the aging process. There are things you can do to stay as healthy as you can as long as you can. 
And I want to be one of those guys that people always have to request seeing my license to know how old I am. Now, I know how old I am from a mental standpoint, but honestly, dude, I feel like I'm 21. I always feel that way right now. I still do. And dude, it's, dude, right? Don't say like you're 21, dude. When I was around you, that's how I felt, man. Like your energy, your stamina, like oh, you talk about things, like oh, you're super passionate about things. Like, that's what draw me to you. I'm like, yo, I need to get into Kevin World. I need to see what he's doing. Because, like, when I'm your age, dude, which is pretty much far from now, right? Yeah. I want to look that way. I want to be that way. I want to have that energy, that stamina. I want to be able to have that internal balance, right? Going back to six packs, right? Because yeah. if you didn't have all that stability right there in that abdominal complex, you want to be able to balance like you balance and move those guiders like you balance. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the word passion, and that's basically – one of the key components of getting not just a six pack, but getting in shape, staying in shape, changing your, high, your dietary habits, and just making positive changes in your life. You have to want it. And then you have to create a signal in your mind like you were already in possession of that, which you want. And you have to see yourself in that position and you have to act like you're already there. And I'm going back to Bruce Lee. When I was in like middle school, watching his Kung Fu movies, the ones were all translated and dubbed into Chinese. And then we'd walk around school going, you got a problem with me? Bring it on. And we like, you know, they do the fake translation. And it became this big joke. But what stuck with me was the mind power, the brain game. You have to act like you're in possession of that which you want all the time. And when you do that, you create this amazing amount of positive chi and energy that you emulate from your body. We said a power surge. Mm -hmm. And then when you put that energy out, it comes back to you. It's a big magnet. We're nothing but particles of energy walking around that are clumped together. We, we all are. We're exactly the same on that level. We're all just particles of energy. Trees, rocks, bark, which I'm looking at on the ground out here, this, this um, from landscape. You know, and it's, it's also like energy. going back to what you said, right, about energy, yeah. right? I feel like one of my favorite sayings is by Albert Einstein. And then we'll, don't worry, guys, we'll get into how to build at six, but we got to tell a story first. Yeah, of course. You know, so one of my favorite things about Albert Einstein when he says like, you know, energy is not created or destroyed. It is simply transferred right so that's one of my favorite things so if i'm constantly doing the work every day to maintain myself guess what that energy is going to transfer down to my family to my friends to my peers right and it's just going to make the world itself into a better place especially because what we've came out of i think for me being a healthy fitter person i really have to take the responsibility to show people like no don't go shift to that mindset shift your energy to stay where you want it to stay, mm -hmm. that way you can keep maintaining your body and your health. Absolutely. And by the way, everyone out there watching, all two or three of you, whoever there are, it doesn't matter. Um, if you have any questions, just I have my phone next to me. Now we're on Zoom, so I can't actually see my feed on my computer. Oh, I didn't do my, my, my normal thing. So I have to do a, I have to do a quick prayer, uh, Roger, so bear with me. God, please listen to my prayer to bring back Facebook friends option on Facebook. And Mark Zuckerberg, if you can hear me, this is my fifth plea. I'm going to keep playing until you're sick of hearing me, until someone, until one of my videos go viral and get into your ear. Please, please, I beg you, pretty please, with ice cream on top, bring back the live friends feature because it's so much more easier to work with. And I don't have to go from Zoom into live and back and have like this little latency period where I'm fumbling around, looking around to see if I'm live and look like a stupid idiot. I just want the feature back. That's all I ask. I'll take you two seconds to snap it back on. Okay, exactly. <laughs> I think they transferred it over to Instagram, so they're like, oh, Facebook doesn't get that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. that rant is over with. Now, let's get down to the business. So, we got the business, it's part of the business out of the way. I have passion, and, and I see myself in possession of that what I want. It's the power of manifestation, it's the power of putting your energy out there. And Roger has that same thing. We're cut from the same stone. He's like a 20-year younger version of me. That's what I see. I saw him in the gym one day working. I'm like, who's this guy? When he first came, to, when he first started working at the gym, I'm like, I gotta meet him. He's got, he's got chops, man. And then like, we have a mutual friend at the gym. It's like, oh, it's Roger. He works at the front desk. I'm like, oh. And then you told me you're getting your, your training thing and all that stuff. And I'm like, I'm like, why are you even? Why are you not working as a trainer at our gym already? And there was there was red tape involved and whatever. And that's that's behind us. We're we're through there. Mm. But let's get into like, how do you get a six pack and how do you maintain a six pack? So I'm going to take the floor first and say this, to achieve a six pack, that's, that's the legwork. That's the hard part. When you get to that point, I feel it's cruise control after that. 
Do you agree with me on that, Raj? Yeah, I mean, pretty much, because after that, it's just maintenance, right? And one of my favorite things is prevention is better than a cure. So once you're there, it's just like you're preventing it from going backwards. You know, one of my biggest things that people always ask me, I have a gut, what is the number one reason? You know, I usually ask them lifestyle questions. So that's the first thing I would start with, right? So let's jump into lifestyle questions, right? Yeah. What's one lifestyle question you would ask a customer if they're like, or a client or whoever you're training, they're like, how do I get rid of this? Well, the first question I ask is, do you drink alcohol? Yeah. And then I say, do you eat late at night? It's like, it's like I go right to the diet first. You know, it's, it's always the diet. The core, which is basically not just the stomach, but it's like this whole area here. That's the center of everything. That's your center chakra. But specifically the stomach, inside and outside, are the two most important parts of the body, in my opinion. A strong abdomen, a strong core, is going to translate to a strong body. It's going to enable you to do all these things that you do outside on the streets really efficiently and really well, including sports. Now, if the bacteria inside your gut is out of whack or out of range, you're not going to break food down well. You're not going to digest well. Your hormones are going to be jacked up. Your cortisol could be high, and you're going to ha hang on the fat and hold on the fat, and it's not going to be good. Mm -hmm. So the first thing, the first step, I would say, is you got to focus on your diet, and we got to find out what's wrong with your diet. So to, ask, to answer your question, when I see someone that says, I need to get rid of this, I automatically ask, I don't care what they're doing in the gym. What does your diet look like? When are you eating? And do you drink alcohol? And you yeah. can drink alcohol, but how much are you drinking and when are you drinking it is really my first questions. Mm -hmm. And I mean, going back to what you said, right? When are you eating, right? So most people, I mean, this is pretty simple science and you can back me up if you want to, but it's usually you don't want to eat past 10 p.m. and you don't want to eat at least, give yourself at least two hours before you go to bed, you know? That way your food can get really digested in that system. Am I right or am I wrong? Well, I always say don't eat past 7, 7 p.m. because mm. your liver and your organs go into a different phase at that point and your pancreas no longer wants to release insulin after 7. So if you're eating at 10, you would have to go to bed at midnight just to get that two-hour window. I do agree with the two-hour window. And I say try to fast for a minimum two hours from the time you get done eating until the time you go to bed. So if you finish by 7 and you go to bed by 10, you've got three hours under your belt. And it takes approximately four hours for the first phase of peristalsis to occur, which is the first digestive process. So the more time you separate between your last meal and the time you go to bed, the better off you're going to be. And one of the definite, absolute, in my opinion, best tricks of the trade to acquire a six pack is to finish as early as you can in the day. So if you can finish at five or 6 p.m. and then go to bed at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, you've had five hours of fasting, that's gonna be one step in the major right direction in order to get a six pack. So there you guys go, step number one. There you guys go. We just locked it in for you. I mean, that one step there is going to add years onto you guys' life. Just giving you that one step, literally. Take that one step. Let us know how it goes. Or if you guys are taking this step, drop down in the comments. Let us know if that's working for you. Or try it. Come back to this video and say, hey, Roger, I tried that one technique that you and Kevin suggested and it did work for me. What else do you got for me, brother? Well, that absolutely is a, I'm going to expand a little bit more on that eating late at night thing. I feel that that is probably 75% of all cause mortality and all the healthcare crisis that we have. It's from late night eating and drinking, especially when it's like two or three glasses of alcohol and then like a nacho cheese platter. It's like high saturated fat, high carbs, maltose, all combined together late at night, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. People going out at nine o'clock to eat dinner, have two drinks and then go to a bar and drink more until the wee hours of the morning. That is the worst thing, worst by a mile that you can ever do for your body. If you are serious about getting a six pack, if you are serious about major health, like boosting your health to an exponent of 10, then you will do whatever it takes to get there. That's what I tell people. That's another thing. It's like, I, I, I've never compromised. It's like, if you want something bad enough, you'll do what it takes to get there. Like today I fasted for 18 and a half hours. I was training, I was doing different things. I run around, I'm like, Fine, I'll just keep pushing my fasting back. I'll keep my, my fast going until I'm able to have a shake. I brought my shaker bottle and I put all my ingredients in, I put some water in, I shook it, and I had it. I broke my fast like 18 and a half hours. That is called dedication. That's called passion. So if you're able to do things like that, those little things add up dramatically. And those are the things you have to do to acquire a huge goal because nothing that is magnanimous in life is ever achieved easily. You got to put some sweat and equity into it and some work. So, exactly. Go ahead, exactly. And if, 
if you're not putting that sweat and equity, right, you're not going to feel like you deserve it. That's the main thing right here. You know, so we could call step number two, fasting, right? For me personally, I fast every week. I know, Kevin, you were telling me you fast like 48 hours one time for the month. You were telling about that surgery. But for me, as a trainer, for me, I do 16 hours every Sunday. Or if I miss a Sunday, then I know I have to do 32 hours. But for me, consistently, I do 16 hours from Saturday right into Sunday. And that's how I get my fasting. And I can tell you, oh, praise Jesus, Lord. Fasting is so amazing. I mean, you're talking about managing your emotions, managing your mindset, you know, cutting down that ghrelin that comes inside of your body when you're always hungry. So it's going to help you to control those eating habits as well. And I think one thing, suggestion that you gave me was the Himalayan salt while we're fasting. Go ahead and dive on that for me. Kevin. What was that again? The Himalayan salt while we're fasting. Oh, the Himalayan salt. Yeah. Okay. So what you're, what you're referring to, the whole thing you do is called time-restricted eating. And I would say, I would call that um, tip number two on getting the six pack. They haven't even touched like exercise. We're still talking about diet and fasting. That's, that's how important diet is. It's like diet is 90% of everything. It really is. And men mentality is like 90% of everything. Exercise is probably 10% of it. So time restricted eating is what you're referring to. So basically you, you eat in a shortened time frame. There's a, there's a few ladies watching us actually who work with uh, me and my friend Jason down in the Caribbean right now. They know all about fasting because we have them doing protocols. We've had them on it since January and stuff. And they've been losing 30 pounds, 40 pounds plus. And it works. It just works. So time restricted eating is when you eat in a shortened amount of time and you fast for a longer period of time every day. So your fast has to be longer than 12 hours. So you're doing 16 hours, which is great. And he mentioned the word ghrelin, which is a hunger stimulating hormone. So when you get hungry, you have this hormone in your body called ghrelin, which spikes. When your hunger starts to dissipate, you have this other hormone that rises called leptin. So leptin is a hunger satiating hormone. Ghrelin is a hunger stimulating hormone. So your goal is to always try to get those in a balance by, by fasting over a period of time, even 16 hours every single day, ghrelin starts to come down and leptin starts to come up. And when you do have that spike of hunger in the morning, when your body gets acclimated over a few weeks, that spike of hunger becomes less severe and it becomes less long after a while. So it becomes shorter. So you might be hungry for like a minute and then hunger's gone. And when that starts happening, your energy levels start going through the roof. Your mind, your brain function, your eyesight starts getting sharper. Magical things start to happen. And you're like, wow, this is incredible. And after 12 hours, your body uses up its stored glucose, which is your basically carbohydrates, and you go into fat burning mode. So if you can spend four hours in a fasted state between 12 hours and 16 hours every day, just think about that. It adds up after a while. You burn a lot more fat and calories, and your body becomes fat adapted over a long term of time, meaning that your body's main fuel source is going to be fat for energy throughout every single day of the week. So if you can program your body to do this in say a four to six week span of time, then you're gonna be a fat burning machine. So sea salt, I love sea salt. And the reason why is this, because when you fast for an extended period of time, your insulin levels stay low, which is good because it's preventative for diabetes and stuff. And your HGH levels rise, which is also good for building lean muscle mass. However, when your insulin levels stay low for a long period of time, your body starts to purge electrolytes from your body, from your system. So you're gonna, you could possibly have a mineral deficiency in electrolytes, such as potassium, magnesium, um, fluoride, all these different things. So if you take a pinch of sea salt during the middle of the morning, you're not gonna have to worry about any of those deficiencies of electrolytes, plus sea salt instantly kills your appetite like that. So if you have a hunger pang, eat some sea salt. I just like, I literally shotgun, I put it on my hand, I eat it, or I just sprinkle my mouth and I chew it, or I let it swirl around in my mouth. Hunger's gone, I try it, taste it with some water, and out the door I go. So Dude, sea salt is magic. That's pretty much the same thing. Oh, I do my sea salt too as well, man. And you know, the funniest thing, like a lot of people was, you know, tagging salt to hypertension. Again, it's just the type of salt, guys. So when he says sea salt, we're talking more like your Himalayan salts right here, right? Not table salts that you get at the store. We're talking Himalayan salt. Because even that white table salt that you're eating, that's not even salt. That's pretty much 99% something else and probably like 0.1% salt so we're talking about himalayan salt so anytime you're buying you know salt make sure it says made in pakistan because that's where pretty much himalayan salts come from so that's where you want to get all of your salts from himalayan salt change that put 
um, take away your table salt, put Himalayan salt, big different right there. One of the topics that you touched on, you said earlier, Kevin, you talk about alkalizing, right? Yes. One of my favorite topics. Oh my God, I love this. Me too. Simple thing, simple thing that you guys can do. One easy technique. Divide your weight into two and that's it. You got your ounces that you needed to drink for the day. If you're going to the gym, just add 10 more ounces. That one technique right there, it's going to blow you up. You know, we're talking about alkalizing the body. One thing, as there are so many studies related. Once your body's alkalizing, guess what? You need like less sleep. Like I probably can operate on six hours of sleep and my cognitive memory and everything is going like so fast. That's awesome. So you're saying cut your body weight in half and have that much water a day? Yeah. Okay. So I weigh, so I weigh 180, right? So yeah. 180 divided by two, that's 90. So that's 90 ounces plus I work out. So I do about 120 ounces a day. Okay, so you're almost drinking a gallon. 128 is a gallon. Yeah. That's a really good. So my friend Jason, with part of this Caribbean thing that I do, we he just threw a seven day challenge out there today. And I don't know what the I don't know what the the, the actual components are going to be. I just jumped into it. It's about drinking water and having enough hydration during the day. And I'm I'm super guilty of not drinking enough water. I know I don't drink enough. And I used to be so passionate about getting my gallon of water a day in. Um, that it was unbelievable. I had to get a gallon of water a day or I'd, I'd be like on suicide watch almost. And one day I just stopped drinking so much. And I'm like, this is overrated and it's stupid. I eat so many vegetables and fruits. I don't need all this water. This is research. I felt like I was drinking too much. I weaned back and it was so comforting not having to run to the bathroom 50 times a day to pee. And I'm like, nine o'clock morning. Yay, my pee is clear. I'm good to go. And I just like chug, chugging jugs of water all day long. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. It's stupid. Mm -hmm. um, I do know that Water, yes, it's important. Hydration is important, but I think you can get it from various sources too. And when you do time restricted eating and only eat two meals a day, that makes it even more challenging for me. But it's just like I'm I'm attached to like fasting so much. I do believe that there's a place for dry fast once in a while where you have nothing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. if you can do a dry fast for 24 hours, no water, no food, no bathing, no toothbrush, no deodorant, nothing. You you want to avoid people because you're gonna attract flies, but. A dry fast is like, that's like a super, super detox right there beyond belief. So sometimes when I do a 48 hour fast, I will push myself on just doing very little water for the first day. And then the second day, usually because I work out, I drink more in the morning. And usually when I'm working out is when I drink the most of my water a day, I probably have about maybe 32 ounces. I get up in the morning, I try to slam 16 ounces immediately. Then I'll work out and I'll sip water. And then I'll go through like another 16 ounce container by 11. Then I'll have a shake and I'm like, well, there's another 10 ounces. And then I have like, this huge salad with cucumbers and celery and all these different things there. I'm like, oh, it's plenty of hydration. I'm getting it. My body feels fine. I can feel like my body's super sensitive. And a lot of you people listening out there, you might be able to find this out or you may be the same way. You, you can tell how your body feels immediately when you have anything like a stimulant or if you have a, um, a protein powder or if you have like dairy or you break out itches or something like that. My body's super sensitive. That's actually a good thing. That's a good sign that your body is, is digesting food well because you have an instant effect of something. You drink something, if you have like alcohol or, or like a, um, I don't know, something with caffeine in it, and you get like a hit of it like this, and like you're feeling it fast, you're, good, you're digesting well. So that's actually a good thing and a bad thing depending on what you're, what you're taking in, but just know that. And um, um, to expand a little bit on what you were saying, the sea salt is very alkalining to the system. And I've gotten, in, I've gotten in scraps with some trolls before on my Facebook page, telling me that I shouldn't be talking about anything, something I don't know about. And they said, oh, you should be following this guy and this doctor knows blah, blah, blah. You don't know what you're talking about about alkalinity and you shouldn't talk about that to people and blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. And I went, friend, see ya. Because exactly. I do know what I'm talking about about alkalinity, damn it. I've been really? studying it for 20 I mean, years. How do I not know? <laughs> for me, people like to overcomplicate it, right? And yeah, it's very exactly. simple. It goes back to like the simplest little things. So just don't overcomplicate it, guys. That's what we're here for you is just putting back the science and working out, right? So keep it as simple, stupid as possible, yep. right? So we just covered three major things right here. The first thing we went over like when to eat, right? The second thing we went over is Himalayan salt. And the third thing that we went over is alkalizing your body. How much water should you be drinking? So there's three things right there, guys, that you can pretty much take from us. Try it out. Remember, guys, these are recommendations. So we always say, hey, go to your physician before you change anything in your diet, right? But there's three things that you can take away. Try it out. See if it works. Come back. Let us know it works. We'd love to hear, guys. Anything else you got to me, Kevin? So we just pretty much 
going a long time on the diet part because again it is the most important guys as one thing they say in the fitness industry you can diet 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 but you can't work out if you're not dieting guys it doesn't work the other way you have to be dieting absolutely absolutely and you know to add one more um a one-two punch to your whole to that whole thing we just talked about those three bullet points on the diet you can actually put your salt in your water so a teaspoon of himalayan sea salt or just he mentioned like Himalayan sea salt, pink, pink Himalayan sea salt. They're very nutrient dense, but just any good sea salt is good. Just don't get the regular table stuff, like table salt that you buy in a store in those big circular weird containers. Just don't buy that crap. There's actually sucrose in it. There's sugar and salt. That should be a dead giveaway right there to stay the heck away from it, right? So you can put one teaspoon of salt per liter of water, which is 33 ounces. So if you have like a 32 ounce bottle of water or something, or one of those drink things, like, you know, reusable containers, one teaspoon of sea salt in there, shake it up, and that will alkalize your water. It'll give you electrolytes. You don't have to get like Gatorade or any of those crappy drinks with, with you know, artificial colors and sweeteners in them. And then you're good to go. And then you're gonna alkaline your system. And if you do that, you're drinking that during a fast. I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna purge toxins from your system. Your joint's gonna be working well. Your brain's gonna work well. And it's gonna be a wonderful world. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, guys. Okay, so let's get into some exercise tips now. What is your number one exercise tip for getting a six pack? Dude, isometric holds. So we're talking about planks, right? Just holding in a plank. That's the, that's the basics, right? You're just starting a high plank or a low plank, right? Those are two of my favorites right there. Isometric, isometric all day. I tell people if you're just starting out in abs, your back is probably going to be weak, right? So it's better we have you holding it see where the weak points are and then work from you from there what about yours kevin well i'm going to expand on what you're going to what you exact you said so it's almost it's exactly what you said but in a different terminology i'm going to reframe it i use the word tension tension is the key thing in your abs so for example i'm a huge fan of kettlebells so a lot of drills that you do with kettlebells require a lot of tension in your abs or contracting your abs or bracing if you will so let's talk about turkish get-ups Heavy Turkish get-ups, you lie on the ground, you bring your kettlebell up like this, and you go from a lying position on the ground to a standing position, and you come back down, and you go all the way to the floor, you switch arms, and you come up. So if you did five Turkish get-ups each arm, that's 10. That trumps a 1,000 crunches by a mile. And the reason why is this. When you're doing a crunch, you do a crunch, you squeeze your abs, you release the tension. Squeeze, release the tension. You have about one-tenth of a second of contraction on your abs, and it's gone. Now, as soon as you hold the kettlebell up like this and you're lying on your back, your abs are tight. It takes you approximately 30 seconds to do a full Turkish get up all the way up and all the way down on one side of the body. 30 seconds of tension, you switch sides, tension stops for five seconds as you switch, it starts again. 30 seconds again, you get up, you come back down. So add that up. So you've got one minute times, let's see, 10 Turkish get ups. Well, five, actually, you're, you're doing both sides. So that's five full minutes of tension on your abs. So you need to have tension on your abs. So plank, you got tension on your hands or on your forearms. You've got tension on your abs. Holding it for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, working your way up to a minute and stuff like that. That is marvelous. And it's safe for your back and it helps reduce the risk of back pain. And it can actually be a corrective exercise for back pain as well. So number one, always focus on tension and longer contractions of your abs as opposed to lots of reps. Oh, that's a bit my lip. Okay, <laughs> so that's my tip right there. I'm going to send it back to you. Awesome. Awesome. And yeah, I love that one. You know, right under tension, guys. That's what you need, especially if you're a beginner. Just start on like, where do I start? Start there. Feel how your body feel. Correct your posture. And if it doesn't work, drop us a DM, guys. Jump in our inbox. We're here to help you guys, especially what we've been through. We're here as trainers to make sure you guys are getting healthy, feeling safe, and feeling comfortable in your body. Another one of my favorites right there is V-ups. Like, I can knock out V-ups every single day. I'm doing probably like 30 V-ups. First thing in the morning I get up, I challenge myself. I do 20 V-ups as soon as I get up. Just right there, just knocking Holy it moly. <laughs> right what I have energy when I woke up in the morning. Mm -hmm. You just get right on the floor and just rip them out? Just rip them out. I think you should adjust your camera right now and show us what a V-up looks like. Hell yeah. So let me go and duck out 20 V-ups for you guys. <laughs> right here, right. 20, man. Uh, Give us you, guys, you guys got me on the V-up challenge. Give us a little demo. All right. 
So let me see here. Right there, right. perfect. There we go. That way. Right on the ground. We're nice and down. I'm just gonna do my hands nice and up. So we're up. Two, oh yeah, that's a kill. That's a kill. Three, four, five. I'm gonna go to ten. One. That's perfect. Two, three, four, five. There you guys go. Easy. Just knock out those V ups right there, but. You know, it takes some time to build up the stability in your body to get to that level right there. So that's why I'm always talking about stability, stability, stability. Mm -hmm. That is a pretty advanced exercise that Roger is doing as well. And we would never expect or even try to force anybody to do anything beyond their comfort zone because we never want to put people into threat when we're training them. And mm -hmm. you can do a variation like that by keeping your knees bent and just like coming back and forth with your hands going forward instead of coming overhead and stuff like that. There's all kinds of variations, but that's pretty impressive, brother, by the way. Or you can um, alternate it too as well, guys. So you can alternate. Let's yeah. You can alternate. Yep. So I've got the next tip I'm going to give you is focus on working your abs from various angles and directions. So I'm a master at three-dimensional movement. That's one of my one of my things. So if you think to yourself, okay, I'm doing a crunch. I'm even doing a V up, but I'm only going like like it's still like a linear pattern, straight like this. Now. If you do something that's three-dimensional where you kick one leg under your body, you roll over sideways, you come back the other direction, and you go back and forth a few times, you've got a lot of recruitment going on here. So you're hitting the rectus of dominus is this part of your abs right here, the front and back, uh, the top and bottom. And then you got your obliques over here, inner and outer obliques. So you want to try to hit all these areas. So if you can, you get more bang for your buck if you do drills that incorporate more like all of this area. Bicycle crunches are a pretty good example of that when you're lying on your back. Mountain climbers kind of do that as well. But if you do something where you're flipping around like this in different angles and directions, that's going to recruit a high amount of the whole abdominal area. And if you don't do that in one drill, just make sure to focus on all those areas. So incorporate something like a linear pattern like this, which is the sagittal plane, and then do something that's like a, a side bend, a twist. Try to get as many movements as you can into your ab routines. So that's gonna go a long way in building definition in your abs. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, let's touch, let's touch on the obliques, right? Yeah. So on the obliques, one of my favorite beginner workouts, because you just give us a 3D. So let me drop a beginner. Again, going back to isometric hold in a side plank, right? That's going to get you those muffin tops to go away. Everybody's like, every woman out there is like, man, how do I get rid of these muffin tops? I want to get rid of these. Easy, guys. Go on your side hold. So you're in a plank. You're going to go to the side hold. You can go to knee, on your knees. If you're not advanced, or if you want to advance it, you go all the way down to where you're on your side. So how does that look like? Let me give you a nice little demo here. So we're just going to get rid of the side of this, right? So we're here, we're down, we're coming up. So this is the advanced version, keeping that navel straight forward, body nice and straight, or you can be down, up, and you regress it just like that right there. So there's an exercise that you can use See those obliques on the side here. Okay, I'm gonna add one element to what he did and I'm gonna jump back and give you a demo. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay, so you got that? Whoa, my computer almost fell off of my situation. <laughs> am I in frame? I am. Okay, so now you got this one Roger said. So sometimes I'll have people just do this, bend one leg, and then just kind of hold this one up. Now, you can do this too. So you're holding a plank and then you can do a side dip where you lower your hips and raise your hips up like this. And you can do this on your hand, which is a little more challenging. And you can do a complex move like this, side dip, and then bring your knee to your elbow, like this. So that right there is a good example of like I was saying before, about how to get multiple movements in in your ab routine. So any one of those, oper op any one of those operations we just did will work just fine. And you have to kind of figure out what your level is and just work your way up. So we got something for everybody modifications up to advanced rules. Exactly, and I think one of those, that's the major thing, right? That most people are scared of. Man, I don't wanna work out with you, you're already fit already. I'm like, no, listen, I can take anybody they want and take them to the level that they want exactly. to be. So right there, guys, we just showed you, if we were just starting you out, these are the ab exercises, or these are the exercises that we'll do, because we can regress pretty much anything, and then we can progress you right through everything for me i pretty much learned like you know stability strength power 
And then, you know, there's three different levels. So that's the model that I learned how to build pretty much anybody. I can pretty much take anybody right now, look at you, you know, walk you through certain drills, walk you through certain assessments, and then get you to where you want to go. But at the end of the day, we're not going to be like those people that are going to tell you like, it's going to take a month or three months or four. No, it's going to take time and discipline. We, me and Kevin, we just got up and get this way. We had to maintain what we had. And Absolutely. that's it. We've just been maintaining. That's mm -hmm. the way we look. Yeah. So I've got two more tips in my head about how to get and maintain a six pack. I'm going to volley back to you and see if you, if you can figure out what one of those are, both of those are. Roger. Two tips? Two things. Two things. Yep. Two more tricks uh -huh. in the trade. So two tricks. Yep. All right. Let me try. Let me try and at least get one. Okay. Are we talking exercise or diet? Uh, exercise related. Exercise related. I mean, Gada for sure. I know you love the Gadas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know I you love the Gadas. Gada. That's actually like a really hidden secret. But these are like these are like things that I think you would. When I mention them, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, totally. I think you'll totally agree with me. Do you give up? Yeah, I give up. I, I always I only could guess the Gada. Okay. One of the other tricks is you also want to do um, functional exercises with with weights for the rest of your body and build as much muscle as you can through your whole entire body. Because the rationale is this, the more muscle you build, the higher your metabolism is going to be. The mm -hmm. higher your metabolism is in a 24 hour span of time, the more weight you lose, and the more you're gonna see your abs and your six pack. Especially if you're doing exercises that require you to have that tension in your abs. If you're doing heavy deadlifts, if you're doing heavy um, double military presses with kettlebells, if you're doing double squats with kettlebells, those kind of drills where you have to brace your abs all the time, they're gonna have a transfer effect because you're building a lot more muscle in your body, you're boosting your metabolism, you're burning more fat, and you're getting some um, ab work by default as well. Mm. So that was another trick. And I got one more big one. I think we talked about this really briefly when we first started chatting right before we went on the air. Oh, which one is this? You got to give it to me, man. Dude, you're I'm a like, master at this. Like, I'm when you said folks in that, I was like, oh, man, right through the body. I was like, Kevin's going to knock that one. What's <laughs> the next one? I, I'll, I'll give you a hint. We talked about doing an event together back in like February before the coronavirus hit. Oh, running, of course, cardio, 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 yeah, cardio, a, baby. <laughs> a very specific type of cardio. Uh, running, sprinting. Sprints, there it is, there's the keyword. Sprint training, high intensity interval training. I love hill work. I love doing hill sprints, going uphill, then I go sideways, sideways, reverse, Uphill, sideways, sideways, reverse. And then sometimes I'll do, I'll do bear crawls up the hill, run back down, and then I'll go backwards up the hill, bear crawls. Mm -hmm. So sprint intervals, high intensity interval training, that accelerates your metabolism through the roof for the next 24 to 48 hours. Again, it has a transfer effect of burning more fat. And we, hit, you know, we can do all the side dips and all the crunches and V-ups we want in the world. But if, you're, if your diet is out of whack and you're not burning the fat that's covering your abs and stuff, you're never going to see them anyway. So we need to burn that fat. We have to get the spot reduction thing way out of our head because it's impossible. And sprint intervals have magic effect to them. So they burn a ton of fat when you're doing them. The transfer effect goes on for 24 to 48 hours. The hour after you're done doing a sprint interval workout or high intensity interval workout, there's this thing called EPOC, E-P-O-C, which stands for? Uh, I, I forgot. I forgot. Uh, excess? Post-exercise oxygen consumption. No, no, no. So I was literally going to get back right into Twitch. As soon as you start saying my brain start turning off, I'm like, he's talking about fast Twitch, slow Twitch muscle. Yep. Then he's going to go to deoxygenation. Then he's going to go to ATP. And then I'm like, okay, these are starting to come back to me now. All those things you mentioned are what, what happens during the epoch, excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. Your body mm -hmm. tries to go back to its normal regulated spot, also known as homeostasis. Mm -hmm. All those scientific things that he was talking about start to occur in your system and it tries to get back to baseline. In the, when that happens, you burn a ton of calories in that first hour after you're done with your workout, but your metabolism stays elevated for 24 to 48 hours after that. So if you're doing a time-restricted eating protocol, you're not eating late at night, you're doing high-intensity interval training, say, three days a week, you're doing like beefcake workouts three days a week where you're incorporating a lot of muscle mass, those are some of the really deep, Hidden secrets of obtaining and maintaining a six pack over time. So I love hills. I like hill sprints. I've been doing them recently. It's up the road from me here. 
and I plan on doing them as, as long as the weather's nice, I'm going to keep doing them. Even when the weather starts getting cool, I'll probably, I'll probably be forced to put shoes on or at least minimal shoes and I'll go back out there and do it again. Are you using BC Mountain? Is that the one you're using? No, I have a hill over here in Sun Peak. Ah. Yeah, I found it last week. I, I don't know why I didn't think of it before, but it takes, I, I do like a loop around um, Silver Springs and then I come to this hill and it takes me about 25 minutes to get there after I do a loop. And I'm like, perfect. And then I just grind it for like 15 minutes and I run home and it takes an hour and then I do an app circuit at the end of my workout. And boom, oh, that'll man. be tomorrow's workout. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that's a great workout idea, man. You're burning up everything, keeping yeah. up nice and lead and keeping that cardiovascular system nice and tuned. I mean, yeah. that's just a major thing right there, guys. So it's like cutting down everything and implementing everything that me and Kevin said. And again, guys, we always recommend, like, you know, talk to your physician. And once you get your clearance, and you're like, hey, I can do this. Do it, guys. And drop in a comment, drop below, and let us know. Just let us know how it feels when you do these things. So, yep. hey, that's how we do it. That's how you maintain that six pack. That's how you get that six pack. And that's how you keep that six pack. Whether you're in your 20s or in your 40s, just like Kevin said, we're giving away our age right here because we don't care. We plan to stay healthy as long as possible. That's what it's about. <laughs> that, is, that is what it's about mm -hmm. so roger let's close it out is there anything any closing comment you already had closing comments where can people find you and get a hold of you if they want to do online training or anything like that with you or if they or if they're in houston even How yeah get definitely so you guys can always hit me up drop in my dm facebook roger a palmer instagram roger a palmer um so i do virtual so i'm a partner trainer with cg which is called camp gladiator so if you guys want more info on that, go ahead and drop me a DM. I train virtually. So my virtual classes are Wednesdays and Fridays. I do virtual classes, 5 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. on Wednesdays and Friday. Other than that, I'm always available to train you if you want in training person as well, too. Awesome. Sounds good, brother. Well, it was great talking with you and talking smack. Any of you listening out there, if you have any questions or comments, like Roger said, Feel free to hit me up or hit him up, PM us, and we will happily answer your questions. And in the meantime, we'll review quickly. Um, oh, somebody just popped in and said they're in Houston. There we go. Go ahead and hit me up if you're ready to get that working. Cool. Um, so to recap, um, take make sure to drink half your body weight in water every day. Put some sea salt in it. Get alkaline. Don't eat late at night. And try to do time-restricted eating every day. And I would go one step farther, and I'm going to say work out in a fasted state if you can, too. That's going to get you into a um, fat-adapted state. Your body's going to burn calories around the clock more efficiently, and you're going to be able to burn fat quicker, and your stomach is going to get more – you're going to see the definition faster. And also, we talked about um, doing beefcake workouts to build muscle, to increase your metabolism, and doing high-intensity interval training. So if you remember all that, we just gave you – absolutely priceless information you should all owe it you all owe us 100 bucks each right now for our time exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's 100 dollars each of us anyway yeah. i'm just joking all right yeah. i'm out this is killer k rail reporting live roger have a great night and we'll be in touch everybody see you guys <laughs>